how FinTech and Silicon Valley are positioned to evolve over the next decade. America's made great strides and very optimistic, uh, much more optimistic than we were years ago, precisely because we've changed procurement because of our realization that uh, people running these things in a clandestine military services realize that America can do very well and win, but not if it's bringing the, you know, 50,000 hours of services and that whole thing instead of rallying our very best of the best to our cause. The, the real problem on how America does in that context also comes down to the unwillingness from my myopic perch, totally impossible to understand unwillingness of a number of tech uh, companies and engineers to support the U.S. government. Now, I don't think everything the U.S. government does is right. I don't agree with a lot of things. I'm a citizen, and like many people, I'm sure everyone listening, we have our Christmas deepest agreements and disagreements. But um, the, 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 the odd reality that many in Silicon Valley are not willing to support the U.S. government in military context is something that should be a source of great uh, discussion and you know I for one always want to hear well if that's the case how do you justify the fact that you're building your company in the US and driving on our highways and and getting protection from countries that are unhappy with your the, their the encroachment on their sovereignty simply because they don't want to offend the US government and our taxpayers so that that is a really big issue in America uh, that you know many of our software elites have a very different view on how you should support the country that has supported us than say we do at talent here and I do personal why do you think that is? I mean, please call out some company names if you want to, but you, you know, well, motivation not to say There's a long answer. I think the short answer is that they, some of them just don't have the sense God gave a go. Um, and they confuse having a high IQ with being sensible. But in any case, the longer answer would be um, something like, um, I, I think there's just, a, just a, not an understanding of the historical reality of tech. We get away, in, in those of us who are entrepreneurs, for looking weird and living our own lives and, and not being particularly conformist because people in America see that we're creating value for them. The Silicon Valley of the, of the first generation was building things that Americans understood would help them. If you're sitting on your perch in Silicon Valley and you're only creating value for yourself, monetizing the natural resources of other of your fellow Americans and others in the form of monetizing their data and providing no value to them except for disrupting the businesses that people work at, you're going to find at your level of trust it goes really down really far quickly. And, you, and I don't think this is something you can kind of IQ your way out of, which is I think essentially one of the problems in Silicon Valley. They just think that they're so smart that they can smart their way out of this. And But, you know, it's just so obvious. Who are the worst offenders? Well, you know, they shift. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, it's like, I don't, I don't know if it's helpful. Like, you know, people, it, it comes in a rolling, in a rolling set of offenses. I, I, and, I, and by the way, I'm hopeful there at some point could be some reform because now this is something that really most people are very, very aware of. And by the way, it's a reason why a lot of us, uh, you know, like, as I mentioned, I, I believe we we're the first company to leave the valley. When we left the valley, it was looked at, looked at as something completely crazily ridiculous. Who could leave the valley? Now, lots of people are leaving the valley, and part of the reason they're leaving the valley is because the, the brand of the valley is not good. <laughs> and it's not good because they can't answer simple questions. What does your software do to help somebody? And the answer will be, I give a lot of money to philanthropy. Well, I'm all in favor of philanthropy, but there has to be a more direct answer. What does your business do? Or maybe there should be a more direct answer. Our country, our company does nothing to help humanity, and we're okay with that. But this, like, so in any case, I, I think I think that there's a rolling set of offenders. I think the rolling set of offenders will probably change over time, not for the right reasons, but simply because it just can't go on like this. To what extent do you blame them personally because, for example, their motivation was just profit maximization without any other consideration versus accept that they have a duty to their shareholders uh, and also if regulation doesn't exist, they, you know, have every right to continue operating in the way that they are. I, I don't dispute anyone's right to uh, to work within the context of the law, and part. I mean, and I very much believe these things should be regulated so that people can have, you know, work within the context of the law. And and and, and it is true that it's so. But if you are on the cutting edge, just to take the very simple example of that our myopic perch helping the Western world stay as strong and become stronger in the future, and so that the West uh, structurally wins. 
uh, the battles of, uh, of both the software battles, but also the narrative battle, what it means to organize a society, a society where what, there's wealth provision, education, uh, civil liberties are protected, and we can have open discourse. If, in fact, you are profit maximizing it in your country, and that country is protecting you, you have a duty to protect the country. So, you know, you can, we can, I mean, I love academic debates of this sort, and I'd be more than happy to go down the rabbit hole of, you know, at what, at what point do you, do you, is it, is it incumbent on someone to diverge and to diverge from their actual economic interest and do good? And that, that's a really, really important debate. But in the context of we are the global winners of X, and we are partly the global winners because we are in a country, it can't, the answer cannot be we do not support that country. And, and that, so that, that would be my first baseline. And then after that, we can have a more erudite debate. I'll try one last time to, to, to ask you, and again, I understand if you don't want to say it, but which company or CEO is, is the big offender today on, on that front? Well, you know, I'm not trying to evade the answer and evading the answer. I really think it's a cultural problem. They're sitting in their perch in Silicon Valley where they're the smartest, the best, and the richest. They don't understand how they're viewed in society or how that's viewing our society. And uh, and then when asked, uh, can they help uh, America, they they tend to think this is a super difficult question that should be litigated with the one or two or five engineers in their company that don't agree with helping the U.S. government. And I think it's a cultural problem, and that's why so many of us have left this culture. I wanted to ask uh, about being public. Uh, you've, you've mentioned the short-termism in the past that can come out of Wall Street so by having to report every quarter. Uh, and clearly you're more in the public eye in the process once you're a public company. Do you, do you weigh up going public and wonder sometimes whether it would have been better to stay private or not? To some extent, battling away with short-termism on Wall Street, which I think is one of the most destructive, corrosive attributes of, a, of an otherwise uh, interesting and largely functioning system. We told the Wall Streeters to, that we will, we will, we, we will, we will, we fo we will focus on building the long-term health of our company that we are going to invest uh, in our in our in our product development and in our clients, and then you know you just have to battle it out with them. But you know, I would say, from the perspective of Palantir, we've been at this a long time. I have a lot of people at Palantir who stayed at Palantir because they believe in our company, and to some because they believe for reasons that sometimes are hard to understand, and I struggle to understand. They believed in me, and they, unlike many people in tech, their share price was both going in the wrong direction and a liquid, and they stayed for years and years and years and years. And now those people uh, have shares that are actually quite valuable, and I'm very proud of that, despite the fact that we have to battle it out. You know, we've been battling it out with Silicon Valley and venture for people. Now we have to battle out the short-termism of some some people, not all people on Wall Street. Uh, and, you know, that's, that may be the price, but I'll tell you, um, you know, the fact that these people at Palantir that have been at Palantir for a long time that stayed while all their friends who may not be helping the world very much were making big money and their share price was both in the wrong direction and a liquid. I'm very happy for them and it makes my life better too because I don't, I feel even freer. On the short term, point, clearly it's been good for you on the share price, uh, the share price front and, and you've been in the crosshairs in a good way uh, on Wall Street Bets Reddit forum. Did you keep an eye on that? Is there, is there an aspect where you worry, gosh, it's been too hot in the short term and that means next year people are going to be asking me why the share price is falling. Did you worry about that? Of course you worry about a lot of things when you're somewhat neurotic and introverted. I'm not saying it's never occurred to me, but I have a lot of other worries that, that worry me a lot more. And I like the so-called retail investors for lots of reasons. First of all, unlike many people, they're investing their own money with no safety net. Many of them are engineers, so they actually go out and evaluate our product. And by the way, they, they dispel a lot of kind of what I would call slanderous critiques of, uh, of, of Palantir written by people that don't ever seem to have engaged with our product. I really like these people. I'm very happy we DPO'd. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's some of, you know, when you DPO, you give investors a chance to make money and not just big hedge funds on Wall Street. I'm very proud that normal people uh, investing their own money with their own risk, making their own opinion, made a lot of money. And I'm working, and we are working at Palantir for a long-term outcome. I would, I would say to everybody, you, your audience, retail investors, we're in this for the long haul. If you are speculating, or you are, you know, or you're thinking about the short term, you, there are plenty of other things to invest in. 
we're building the company we believe in. We're going to do it for the long haul. There'll be ups and downs. My lawyers won't so let me say more than that, but it's obvious. And uh, if you want something else, it's a huge world. Buy some other stock. You don't have to buy Palantir. No one's forcing you. We're completely liquid. Do something else. You know, there are a lot of other great companies, less great companies. Who knows? Everyone has their thing. I'll see you in a couple years. We'll see how we've done. We're we're busy in our in our in our working in our shop basically, building the products of the future, delivering them in the present. Uh, no argument, of course, about the share price performance uh, so far since this did. It's been on an absolute uh, tear. Alex Carp there, Sarah, and uh, more to come in, in terms of their business, particularly on the defense side as well in, in the second hour of the show. But but I just thought really interesting to get in there. Uh, on the record uh, about Silicon Valley culture as a whole, saying the brand of the Valley not good, what's your software doing to help people and that many of the companies there at the moment are failing uh, to, to get that message uh, across. I pushed on names, specific names, of course, 